Hello to all. Nice to have you here. And thank you for your interest in my new video. And for your time. Tamron has always built and continues to build some rather unusual lenses. I'm thinking of the Tamron SB, 2.8 to 105 mm Adaptal 2 from the last century, or more recent lenses like the Tamron, 2.0 to 2.835 to 150 mm. In 1991, another optical masterpiece saw the light of day. Today's video revolves around this lens, Tamron SB, 2.835 to 105 mm Adaptal 2. Have fun now with the presentation of this lens. This Tamron lens offers outstanding mechanical quality. The materials used, metal, plastic and glass, look extremely high quality. All markings are milled and filled with paint. This is how it should always be. Simply a dreamlike feel and sight. The distance adjustment runs smoothly, as does the focal length adjustment. The aperture adjustment locks in half F stops, with the adapter for contacts Yashica used here. Only the zoom ring shifts independently, when the lens is tilted up or down. For some shooting situations with long exposures, this can be a no-go. But for the vast majority of applications, this is not an issue. The length of the lens is 97 mm, the weight is 624 grams, without adapter adaptal 2, it accepts screw-in filters of size 67 mm. A small disadvantage, which is due to the time and the technical possibilities, refers to the shortest setting distance of 1 meter, for all focal lengths. A special macro function is not available. The focusing distance is just right. The focus can be adjusted sensitively. As you can see, the front lens rotates as you focus and the length of the lens changes. Also when zooming, the length of the lens changes. But this lens is of such high quality, that it is always a pleasure for me to hold it in my hand, or, thanks to the Adapt L2 mount, to use it on various analog or digital cameras. Tamron lenses were not built with fixed mounts for a specific camera brand. For each lens, the customer still had to purchase a Tamron Adaptal 2 adapter for connection to his camera. If the photographer owned a Canon A1, a Tamron Adaptal 2 adapter FD had to be purchased accordingly. If the photographer had a Minolta X500, a Tamron Adaptal 2 adapter MD was required. Tamron offered special adapters for almost all camera brands. These were simply attached to the respective Tamron lens and transferred all the functions that an original lens of the respective camera brand also offered. Of course, the adapters could be exchanged by the photographer himself at any time, so that different cameras from different manufacturers could be used with the same lens. Of course, this still works today, as you can see here in the video. Ingenious, isn't it? But now it's time for showing pictures taken with this lens. So far, I have only exposed one project on film with this lens. I simply have too many camera systems with the corresponding lenses, so not every lens can expose a film once a year. This project was all about the pure fun of photography, the feel of the camera and lens. I exposed a Fujichrome Superslow CDU2, with a film speed of ISO 1.6, yes, 1.6. The Contax RTS was used for this, I love this camera and also the mirror lockup option it offers. I just have fun taking pictures. That's what counts. Now you can view raw files of the Sony a7 III. Here I show you the optical quality of the lens. These images were taken at a focal length of 35mm, and aperture values of 2.8, 4, 5.6, 8, 11 and 16. Vignetting in the corners of the images is clearly visible at all aperture values up to 8. Apertures 2.8 and 4 should also not be used, if good sharpness performance is important. 
For good image quality from corner to corner of the image, aperture values 8 or 11 should be used, although the extreme corners still do not achieve the sharpness of the center of the image. Here you can see another example with 35mm, and aperture 8. The center of the image is impeccable, the edge area falls off clearly. The question is, what kind of medium you use? If you use a grainy film, you will not notice the somewhat soft edge area, just as with subjects, that do not require sharpness from corner to corner, or using a wider aperture, to isolate the main subject from the background. At 105mm, the lens is barely usable at open aperture, at least at close range at a setting of 1 meter. With stopping down the aperture, in this example up to f8, the image quality improves dramatically, especially between f2.8 and f4, a clear jump towards higher image quality can be seen. A solid performance is shown, by the Tamron 2.835 to 105mm, at 105mm and f8. As expected, the corners do not reach the good quality of the center of the image. If the main subject is in the center, and aperture 11 is used, then close-ups are very possible, here again at a setting distance of 1 meter. Two more raw files I want to show you. In each case f6.7 was used, the focal length was 35 and 105 millimeters respectively. Again, the focal length of 105mm shows up weaker than 35mm. After viewing these raw files, I asked myself, if it really has to be a zoom lens with f2.8 speed from that time. For the Canon FD system, I would far prefer the Canon NFD, 3.535 to 105mm, which is half a stop slower, but it is clearly optically superior. For the Yashica Contacts Bayonet, my choice would be the excellent Carl Zeiss 3.435 to 70 mm, even if I had to give up a few millimeters in the telephoto range. A Carl Zeiss 3.3 to 4.028 to 85 mm, also an excellent lens, perhaps a bit weaker than the 35 to 70 mm just mentioned, would also end up in my camera bag, rather than this Tamron lens. Of course, it's also a question of how much money do I want to spend, and do I perhaps have multiple camera systems? This is where Tamron plays out its advantage, with the interchangeable bayonet. You may already know it. At the end of a lens presentation, I show you edited pictures, this time of course taken by the Tamron 2.835 to 105mm. Thanks again for your interest in your time. About a like I would be very happy, and subscribe to my channel, turn on the notification, so you do not miss a video from me. Stay healthy, and goodbye until next time.